I, I don't care about the game. We don't search for results. We have our game, and that's uh, most, most import, important than uh, the football. Most important for us is Partizan. For us, football is life. We are fighting for the name Partizan and Grobery. By kickoff time, the huge police presence has so far been successful in keeping the fans apart. But that's no guarantee that the game will pass off without a serious incident. At this ground in 1999, a shipping flare was fired from the grubbery end into the Delhi air, killing Red Star fan Alexander Radovich. And in 2000, one of the most serious disturbances occurred at Red Star's ground. As hundreds of fans fought a pitched battle. In this riot, the Grobbery attacked one of their own directors, hospitalizing him, whilst the Delier attacked the partisan coach, slashing his face with a knife. But today, the game's passed off peacefully. In fact, there's not been much action at all. I had one last appointment in the former Yugoslavia. I was about to get up close and very personal with the grubbery. Yeah, that's right, the mob with the shooters. I was bang in the middle of their manor, and needless to say, well off mine. I mean, this is the ghetto where I'm meeting them now. It's like their little betting shop. It's like a bar betting shop type place. Apparently, they're all plotted outside. I think I can see them, actually. <laughs> Tell me a bit about, um, obviously, your relationship with Red Star. Every time when we see them, there is a fight. It is no need to be a football match, a basketball match, or any other match against these two clubs. So you, you go to watch basketball? Football is a very, uh, you know, um, no quality. Okay. So the basketball, uh, we were three, many, many times champions of the world. Ah, okay. And, yeah, and okay. it's a better atmosphere. Yeah. So when it's not kicking off at the football, they go to basketball. Partizan and Red Star both have basketball teams. This is the derby from June 2006. Trouble started in the stands. The police stormed the Red Star fans section and several fans fell down a staircase. More than 100 fans were injured. How do you feel about the clubs from Croatia? No, I don't know. They miss them. Uh, we miss them, especially our friend Jarko. Uh, we have a very strong erotic uh, and sexual connection with them, yeah. This story they were about to tell me about one of their older guys, Jare, was both shocking and unbelievable. In the late 80s, one of the top boys at Torcida came to Belgrade as a guest of the Grobbery. Uh, after five, four drinks, he started to blabber. But for shooting his mouth off, he had to pay a forfeit. They took him to the grave of a partisan legend and demanded that he kiss it. He said, kiss the grave. He oh, I don't want. But when he refused, Jare raped him. Uh, you know, when you say to somebody, I'm going to fuck you, yeah, yeah, yeah. he really mean it. I'm not easily shocked, but I was now. These guys were prepared to commit the ultimate act of humiliation and domination over their rivals. It was time to leave. When we come back, we'll hear what might happen if there's ever a case of firms reunited. I think that it would be plenty of dead people. So what does the future hold for Croatia and Serbia? The 
It's been almost 15 years since the end of the Civil War. And the last significant footballing success of one of their clubs. The quality of football has deteriorated since the separation of the football leagues. Some have called for a unified league to increase competition and raise the standard of football to what it once was. But emotions still run higher. In the summer of 2003, Partizan Belgrade and Dinamo Zagreb met for a friendly in Switzerland that was anything but. Ironically, the Croatian parliament had passed a law the day before banning riots at sporting events. And over 150 Croat and Serb fans were thrown out of a tennis match in Melbourne after a mass brawl occurred at the 2007 Australian Tennis Open. So what would happen if the Croat and Serb football teams started playing one another again? We hate so much these bastards that uh, I think that it would be plenty of dead people. I honestly don't know what would happen on that day, but I'm sure that it would be a uh, spectacle. It will be good, very good. More tension, more uh, better football for sure. But uh, fuck the football. Yeah, it's bad. We're playing with Ali. Actually, only some in the casual yes, we're totally nice. Most rival firms hate each other, but then most rival firms haven't been to war. The memories and experiences of that war are still fresh. It was only 15 years ago, so I can understand why feelings of hatred remain. These feelings have brutalised the firms, and I don't think there's much hope this hatred will ever die. The party's nearly over, and there's time for one last song, but it's not got a lot to do with football. To see webisodes of Real Football Factories International, log on to bravo.co.uk forward slash Real Football Factories International to check out the shape of global hooliganism. After the break, though, Brits behind bars. <laughs>